We're committed to building the community. Celebration Church really values supporting and building our community here in Jacksonville. You know, we want to be the kind of church that uh, that serves our community. That, uh, of course, we believe the most important service we can provide for our community is uh, serving the gospel of Jesus Christ. However, we also want to serve our community in a variety of ways and in getting involved in community projects, in uh, ministering to community needs, and also. Uh, participating in community v events that'll help make Jacksonville a better place to live. So on behalf of Karen and I and the entire Celebration Church family, we encourage you to get involved in our community outreaches. I grew up in South Louisiana and uh, most of that time I was living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana and uh, of course like nearly everyone in South Louisiana I went to school at LSU and uh, made a couple of really good decisions when I went to LSU. The first really good decision was I chose to join the wildest fraternity on campus and my second really good decision was I chose to work at the wildest bar on campus. and. Uh, and those were some crazy days. And uh, just got into a lot, of, a lot of partying and the drug scene, a lot of those things that, uh, that kids do in college that have lost their way. But thank God, um, I had people that were praying for me. And, and kind of my simple story of, of receiving Jesus was, uh, you know, I, I had seeds sown in me by different people. Uh, I'd been to a couple of youth retreats when I was young. And uh, I just knew that giving my life to Jesus was the thing that that I not only needed to do, but the thing that I should be doing with my life. And so right there in the middle of all that craziness, I surrendered my life to Christ and uh, my life has never been the same. And so I was, uh, was in that fraternity and, and was a bouncer at that bar. And so even though I lost my dreams of becoming a bartender, uh, God had a bigger dream for me. And quickly after that, I uh, began uh, attending a great local church there in the Baton Rouge area. It's called Christian Life. Sobel and I worked at the same uh, bar in Baton Rouge, Louisiana while we were students at LSU and then we became good friends at our college ministry called Living Waters. That is where I met my beautiful wife, Carrie. I was praying at the altar um, later on that night, like at the altar call, and I heard this loud voice like praying this incredibly passionate prayer next to me. And I look up and I was, it was him. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. But then it was like three more years until we dated, but that's where I met him, I met him at church. Free Speech Alley is just a, um, a little area in the, in the LSU that they call it the quad area. And so it's a little uh, area right there where people would debate politics. And Pastor Stovall used to go and uh, preach on a bench. And so he wasn't the only one. I mean, there was lots of people who went and preached and debated there. And so all the students would gather around. And, and so that's where he got his start, was preaching right on the bench there. I actually began to lead that college and career ministry. And then we did a lot of mission work. Pastor Stovall was crazy. <laughs> and uh, both before he was a Christian and after, it just channeled itself in a different way. And so I have uh, countless stories uh, from him leading teams to the Amazon jungle. I actually we had this sort of training moment before we went up into the mountains. We were based in Lima. And in that moment, our, the guy who was hosting us, um, he, for, he made us all eat gross food to make sure that we would, it was weird, it was a bizarre thing, but he wanted us all to get a taste of what it would be like in the jungle. So he fed us all this jungle food. I happened to catch a parasite at that meal. And so I spent most of that meal in a hut or, you know, tracking back and forth to the, the, toilet pit. <laughs> so I didn't get to do much ministry on that trip, but um, he took great care of me and I and I looked up at him and said, I will go anywhere with you. I will follow you anywhere. Just make sure I have a decent toilet. That was our life, doing lots of mission work and being on staff at that church. And Carrie and I both thought that, you know, maybe God was calling us to the mission field full time. God really spoke to him as he was pastoring our college group at the church that we went to. And God began to deal with him about planting a church. Crossing this a uh, street, I believe it was Airline Highway, Airline, Airline Highway in Goodwood Boulevard in Baton Rouge, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Jacksonville, Florida. So he invited us, he said, I'm going to plant a church in Jacksonville. He said, God has spoken to me, and uh, we're gonna be moving there, and want you to come come serve with us. And so, we, Ash and I came back, and we were praying about it. I get this message on my uh, 
answering machine. Back in those days, they had answering machines. And so he leaves this message, and this is all he says. Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Jacksonville. I'm coming, to, I'm sending a U-Haul to your house to pack you up and move you to Jacksonville. And so needless to say, shortly thereafter, we moved to Jacksonville. We didn't know anyone here, and uh, it was quite the beginning of a great, uh, awesome journey. The surprise to me was that I was called to Jacksonville and not to the, not to Peru and to serve in the Amazon jungle. And so um, it wasn't a big shift for me. I was fully on board. The main thing was I just had no idea about Jacksonville at all. So Carrie and I moved to Jacksonville and in that process we had asked two families to come along with us and that is uh, Chris and Ashley Brooks and you guys know that Pastor Chris now pastors our Orange Park campus and also Lee and Nicole Alexander. this miracle was I was praying and I just really felt like God showed me that area. I was looking at a map of the city and he showed me the area right there, the corner of Bay Meadows Road and Southside Boulevard. And I just felt impressed to go uh, to that location. And so I drove there the next day, but I didn't see anything. I saw like one storefront, I think like Panera Bread is there now or something. And in my mind back then, I don't even know how much it was, but it's, you know, it was like a zillion dollars in my mind. We can never afford it and the parking wouldn't work anyway. And so I drove back later and I was just like, I, I wonder what that was. Cause I really thought God had impressed that area to me. And, and so, but there was nothing. And so the next day I drove back there again and I was driving by and this time when I crossed Southside Boulevard on Bay Meadows, I looked to my left and I noticed if you go just a little bit down, not right at the corner, but down, a little bit there was a little road that went back there and I saw this little sign and it said Jacksonville Country Day School and so right then I knew okay this has to be it this is God and what I did was right then we pulled into the driveway we went and met uh, it, it just they just happened to be there the, the principal and his wife the Moros at that time and we just walked right in introduced ourselves they didn't know us from Adam and we just basically said hey um, we're planning a church here <laughs> in Jacksonville and uh, you know we would you let us use your gym and and Miss Morrow was like you know that's interesting we, we had a church that had been meeting here it was it was a local church I think that was uh, redoing a building and they needed a place to meet for a little bit of time they and they just they were meeting here and they just moved out and it, it worked real real well for us so yeah sure come on in y'all y'all can rent our building and I mean she didn't know anything about us. Now, if you go to the Country Day School now, it's got a theater, it's got all this stuff, but, but back when we were there 14 years ago, all they had was a gym. And uh, the children's rooms that they have, they really didn't have any children's rooms because they wouldn't let us use their classrooms yet. So they had these two locker rooms um, of, uh, of, for, for middle school kids, I believe. And so it was two locker rooms that were not air conditioned, one for the boys, one for the girls. There's nothing glamorous about it. The, the <laughs> pulpit that we made was, the Pastor Stobel preached from the first Sunday was literally uh, two music stands duct taped together with some kind of fabric, fabric hanging from the front. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that was my um, creation. It was my job to put that together every Sunday. <laughs> we put the kids in a, uh, you know, a trailer out behind the country day school. Really, no, no volunteers, no real launch team or anything like that. That was the the mix that we had going into that first service. But we just knew that God had called us here, and we knew that look, we're gonna make the very best with what we have, and if we're faithful with little, uh, then then God will give us more. You know, we set everything up and here's our first service and it's Sunday morning, August 30th, 1998. And, and I'll never forget, uh, right before the service, um, and, and no one had come yet. And I remember right before the service, there was this little closet in the gym and it was where the mop was and I think some electrical things and switches and that, just a tiny, tiny closet. And uh, I went back there and I just hit my knees and I said, you know, God, no matter what happens today, I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful for, for just the privilege and this opportunity that you've given me uh, and just trusting me to, to, to pastor your people and, and, and pastor and, and, and lead a church. And, and uh, I'll never forget the presence of God just hit me and, and I just felt the pleasure of God and the presence of God and the favor of God. And I just began to weep in that little closet uh, in the presence of God right there. And, 
in, in country day school and I was just weeping in God's presence and so grateful. And I'll never forget, I, I looked up and, and I looked out and there was a little window in the closet where you could see in the parking lot. And I remember seeing all the cars start to come and it was like this line of cars and I, 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 just, I just couldn't believe it. Pastor Paul preached, I remember his first message he preached, enjoying your relationship with God. I remember looking out in that crowd and leading them through that first prayer to receive Christ. I, I, I could see the, the pain and the brokenness mixed with hope in their faces and in their eyes. And some of those people that got saved at that very first service are, are still in our church today. Not only still in our church, many of them are, are leaders in our church. We sent out 30,000 mailing postcards to the zip code where we were planting, and um, people just, honestly, they just came. They would bring that mailer like a ticket, yeah, and they I would did. bring it, and they would bring, show it up when they would show us the tick, the mailer, like, like to get invited, like to come into the door. You know, uh, the worship team was really funny. I mean, Carrie, she sang, and she did a great job, but uh, I played electric guitar with extra distortion. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pastor Stovall had never played key uh, instrument in his life, but for some reason he had this idea he was going to play keys. He had little circles and on every key it said A, B, C, D, E, F, and he would press the key and the, the keyboard would play the, like, the chord, right? So if you pressed A, it pressed an A chord. So he had the chord charts there and then we had an electric guitar. We had no drums, no real vocalist, it was just me. Chris would play like and then this like distortion would come through our speakers which were bad. It was awful. And the good thing was because almost all the people there had either never been to church or unchurched or had had some bad experience with church. They, they, they didn't know any better and they didn't care. I remember when so Pastor Saul would get really fired up, he would take one of those ugly blue chairs and he would turn it around and he would stand up in the chair and do the hip hip hooray at the end of the service. So you knew that was a really good sermon and you probably got a good come on somebody and a, I'm preaching now or an amen or something um, during that sermon because he was really fired up that he had to stand up on the chair. Myself and my wife, my wife is Puerto Rican, and Kenny and Loretta Washington, they were the only two couples of color in the whole church. My wife and I went to Pastor Stovall and I said, Pastor Stovall, we like what you do. Um, we really want to feel comfortable around people who look like us and people who are of color, so we're going to leave Celebration Church. And when I told him that, he turned and he put his hands in his face and he cried. I mean, he weeped like a family member had passed away. And I said, Pastor Stovall, are you crying because we're leaving the church? And he said, no, if you want to leave, you can leave. He said, I'm crying because I don't ever want to be a part of a church like that. He said, James, Nilda, would you please stay with us because this church will be a church where all races are heard, all races are seen, and all races will be in leadership. And diversity being a big part of who I was, uh, I knew that God wanted us to have a diverse church. I knew that He wanted us to have a church that, that looked like heaven, that was made up of different races. And one thing I love about Celebration, it is like a melting pot. You know, it's like a salsa, it's like making salsa. Salsa does not taste good unless you put a little bit of everything. And so I love that about Celebration, that, you know, I am Hispanic, that's my, I'm Colombian, that's my background, and I fit in perfect. And I have friends that are Japanese and friends that are Korean, and I have friends that are from all over the world and over all kinds of walks of life and old and young, and we all fit in. Stovall was intentional about making Celebration Church a diverse church. And um, so that was always our heartbeat. Cookout, the second service, she came up to me and, um, and said, you know, I um, am an atheist and I came last Sunday and someone talked me into coming. I, wasn't, I didn't even want to come because I didn't own a dress and I felt like I wasn't going to look nice enough. If I looked at my closet and this person was begging me about going to this new church, but I didn't have anything to wear. And then she was back, this was the second Sunday and she just got tears in her eyes and she said, but I know that this is a place that I don't have to look a certain way and I don't have to have a pretty dress to come to this church, but I'm gonna be loved. And, um, and she found Christ and she accepted Christ. And uh, that second Sunday, I, I got to be part of coming alongside this other stranger <laughs> that I only knew one week and, um, and we led that person to Christ. And um, because of Celebration Church and because of the call on Pastor Stovall's life, she's now in the kingdom of God. Really transforming the gymnasium of a high school into a, a true a spot, place to worship the Lord. It was kind of a neat thing to do and to see how they'd use the obstacles as opportunities like hanging ferns from the basketball hoops. It was just, it was funny, but it was, it was a good kind of funny. 
it just about doubled every year. So after uh, three years, you know, we were running probably 800 people or more, and then UNF had just built this $22 million fine arts theater. And, uh, and I, we went to look at it, and, and I was just thinking, there's no way we're gonna be able to rent this. It'll be too much money, it'll be hard to, to set up. And so we went over there and we met with them, and uh, we prayed that scripture in James that says, every good and perfect gift comes down from above. UNF was the first time I ever experienced the breadth and the size and the magnitude of what God had done. And it was stunning. I couldn't believe it. I just started crying in the parking garage. There were signs when you drove up to the church saying, we are so glad you are here. It was very different for me growing up in a Roman Catholic background. And uh, I remember the first thing I saw when I was walking into the building was I noticed this guy in front of me walking and he had these toe socks and they were like blue and orange, like gator colors. <laughs> and I said, whoa, we come in a church like that? And I thought, well, this is gonna be an experience. So we moved in there and we were probably had a thousand people our first service. And we quickly grew another thousand people when we moved in UNF and the setup was really uh, difficult. Get to church early and uh, start setting up from probably like six o'clock in the morning or something like that. and. Uh, go through services, get done with services, and uh, probably four o'clock in the afternoon, we'd be done with breakdown. So it'd be a good three hours of breaking on the entire church and stuff like that. When we moved in to our warehouse at Deerwood, which we are now in, um, I just remember the excitement that the staff, the team, really all the church had, because for the first time in like, Six years, we were finally going to be non-mobile. Started really being able to go deep with the God first life and what that really means. Um, things like serving and, and, and how we set atmosphere in a church and, and, and relative and transformational environments and, and that attitude of acceptance that we've, we've always had. I remember the day that Stovall came home and he said, I found our home, like I found our church home. This is where we're gonna build. And and I said, yeah, show me where it is. So he drove me by it and I was like, that's great. I mean, I just didn't understand. I didn't really, I was just like a big piece of empty ground to me. And it was like, and so um, later on, I found out that, it, that, you know, the town center was originally slated to go there. And I just felt like the Holy Spirit challenged me. And he gave me that scripture that says every perfect gift is from the Heavenly Father above. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, Stovall, if that's where you think would be the perfect gift, then you need to believe me for that gift. And right there, I was driving by the land and I was just like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I claim this piece of land for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name for Celebration Church. And I just uh, uh, prayed that and I believed it. The deal fell through at a meeting that happened right during the time that he was driving by praying for the land. And it was just like God just, I mean, he opened that door, nobody could shut it. Us as a staff and volunteers, we were just serving and focusing on the people and focusing on the experience. I've always said that if you come to Celebration Church and you don't like it, I'll pay for your gas money. I've been saying that for 14 years. I haven't paid one red cent. I always knew that we would be a global church with a global impact, that, that we would be a, a, a local expression of really a, a global church. And that's really what you're beginning to see to take shape here. It's the number one thing that people say about Celebration Church is I'm home. And as a woman who has a home and provides a home for kids, I know what home means. Thinking about all the years of serving in God's house, and certainly there's been sacrifice and, and lots of time, but you know, you're blessed. There's a blessing when you're in God's house and you're in your family, your marriage, your kids, and your in your heart, just being in God's presence you know, weekend and making that commitment, you're, you're blessed. On the inside of our church is really a family, not just here in Jacksonville, not just at, at our other locations, but really a celebration family uh, all around the world. It looks completely different on the outside, but the heart is exactly the same. And it's heart that we transfer as we grow. It's not stuff, it's not the, we're blessed to have the things that we have, but that is not what makes Celebration Church, Celebration Church. It has always been, and it will always be, the people that call this church their home. I mean, looking back, how amazing the last 14 years have been at Celebration Church. I cannot imagine 
how incredible the next 14 years are going to be. The things that we're going to see God do, the experiences we're going to have together, the relationships, the ministry, all the amazing ways we're going to see God move in all of our lives and our community here and around the world. And I really believe that more than ever at all of our locations, we are going to see how this church is truly our home.